Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, today is Friday, November the 8th, 2019, um, and it has been one week uh, to this day uh, in which I had my patellar tendon uh, that I completely ruptured. Uh, that is removed totally from my lower leg bone, which is the tibia, causing my kneecap to uh, be pulled up into my upper thigh area or the lower part of my upper leg. Um, uh, and as well, uh, the patellar tendon recessed up into that area as well. So it's been seven days since surgery, uh, exactly a week, and it has been 17 days since the injury. So uh, I'm just going to do a, a kind of a, a quick review of where I am now. Again, if you are going through this injury um, uh, in the future, please let me know. I do know uh, that this has been a very humbling experience, uh, to say the least. Um, so really at this point, um, the first weekend for me, um, the first, you know, few days is just relentless pain, no matter what you do, laying here, whatever. Um, it's just a really, really hardcore, painful experience. However, once you get into day three, you know, four and five, uh, and now here into uh, day six and now day seven, the pain isn't terrible just, just sitting here. It's when, um, let, let's say I or anyone going through this injury stands up. Uh, once we stand up, you know, the blood goes back into the leg. It feels like it's going to explode uh, within about 10 seconds. Uh, and you do your best to kind of weather the storm with that and move around a, as you need to, um, ultimately to lay back down and then be, you know, quite tired from. Uh, the couple of minutes that you spent getting up, moving around, uh, um, only to do it all over again. So what 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 I have found myself now at day seven, at least post surgery, and seventeen days basically um, uh, sitting like this in a sense, is that the psychology uh, runs a little thin. You know, namely you want to get up and do something, but you but you realize that you can't, or you're sitting here and you're thinking and you're saying, you know, okay. Uh, I need to go get this, and then you forget that you're injured in a way, and, and then you uh, kind of react real quick without thinking, and then you realize once again that you have a, you know, a very hardcore injury. So that's been the toughest part for me. Uh, but real quickly, I'll kind of show you uh, what I've been doing for, um, well, at, at least for the past two days. The, past, the, the, the first five days after surgery, I really wasn't able to do anything, but now my mind is wanting to do things, but I really can't. So the psychology... Uh, has become tough for me uh, at this point. But here I'll show you kind of what, what, what my setup looks like. Hold on real quick. So this is kind of a makeshift bed um, that my wife made uh, for me. Our actual bed is, is over there. It's too high for me to get off and on the bed. Uh, I have to have it low to the ground because when I want to get off uh, of, of something, I have to be able to lift this leg up straight without bending it. So it's got a hinge here and it's locked straight. But I have to be able to get it onto the ground with my heel touching it uh, and this off of uh, whatever it is that I'm trying to get off of because it has like a metal um, side and bottom so my leg won't bend. It, it will try to if, if, if I'm not careful and it'll hurt a lot. So the repair basically is you have some holes drilled into the kneecap um, and, and, and it's some type of heavy duty sutures pull the, knee, pull the patellar tendon back onto the tibia. Uh, thus pulling my this is my kneecap so it was up here after the injury so they pulled it down and then latched it back onto the top of the leg um, so the only exercises I've been doing right now is kind of what they call um, a, a heel push or a heel pull so I'm just flexing my heel up down up down up down uh, so I've also tried what we call um, quadricep flexes. I don't know if you can see me moving my muscle here, but I'll flex the quadricep, release, flex, release, flex, release, um, and do my heel lift. But the odd thing is, is it's repaired, at least I'm hoping so, but um, my brain will tell myself, hey, let's try to just move this part of the leg upwards, um, but, but I still can't. Uh, so I'm, I'm anxious to have my follow-up appointment, which is on the 14th, just to make sure we're headed in the right direction. So if I want to lift my leg up here, so it's good to have it elevated. So what I, what I do is I have a, I have a band, uh, and that band is getting washed. It got a little dirty. Uh, but I'll put the band around my foot, and I'll pull that band, and thus enabling me to get my leg up here. So... Um, 
that is kind of uh, how I get from an elevated position to a more comfortable flat position. That's my walker over there. And again, I have a fractured wrist too. So that's that's a tough thing because I, I'm, I'm supposed to be on crutches and that would help me get around more. But because I fractured my wrist at the same time I fractured my or I uh, tore my patellar tendon, I can't put weight with this hand on the crutch. So I have to use that walker and that right a little cup on the top you can see it. i'll zoom in that little cup right there that's what i put my arm on and then strap my arm in with that band uh, and that kind of serves as how i use my right arm to lift that walker so uh there's my crutches but but, but again i can't use them uh, because uh, again of my right hand and i can't put any weight on my right foot so this is where I've been. I mean, for literally um, 17 days. Well, well, seven days for sure. And before that, you know, I, I didn't quite know what to expect. I hadn't had the surgery yet. And I moved around a little bit better. Um, but yeah, so you can see why. I mean, I've been living in, I mean, a really, you know, a 10 foot by 8 foot kind of square for the past seven days. So the psychology of it gets really tough at times. And, and and my only walk is for, with that walker when I get out right through that door to that bathroom um, and generally right back. And by the time I get back here, you know, I'm kind of still still kind of um, in, in discomfort because of all the circulation that goes back into the leg and getting used to that. So um, that's uh, what basically my surroundings look like. So, so at the end of the day... Um, I'm happy it's it's day seven. I am looking forward to um, um, trying to break any type of, of healing records. Uh, as much as I've tried to push through this one, um, I have just been reminded by um, the whole situation that it's not over uh, and, and there's still a long road to travel down. Uh, so anyway, um, I have been watching a lot of videos on YouTube that other people have done. And, and it seems like I'm kind of right in the same ballpark as, as everyone else uh, at the seven-day period. So again, I'm still completely immobilized, which means the leg is uh, stuck straight. And now it's in an elevated position. Um, and this is locked, these hinges, so I can't flex down. And if, and if I did at this point, it would be quite uncomfortable. Um, so we'll see what happens moving forward. Again, this right wrist really, really kind of makes everything even more difficult. Again, I, when I fell, I landed on my right hand and I fractured my wrist at the same time. So anyway, much love to everyone out there. Um, this has been definitely, uh, an, an event though, that has reminded me that there's people out there that can give uh, you support. And in this sense, there's been a lot of people here locally that have given me support. Um, so that's been a great help. So thanks to everyone that that's helped me through this situation, but I do want to reciprocate that and help anyone else, at least with questions, um, as this video uh, stays on YouTube in the future. So let me know if you've been through this. Uh, it, it, it's been, um, a very interesting experience for me, uh, to say the least, you know, being the coach where I'm kind of the uh, person on the court dictating and, um, uh, calling the shots and everything else. Now I'm the one that, can't do anything without help. My wife Carla has been everything uh, the past 17 days, uh, taking me to the restroom, feeding me, sponge bathing me. So I haven't had a bath in 17 days in a sense. I've been sponge bathed um, and so forth, but not really anything thorough. So that's kind of an icky thing too for me. Uh, but all in all, I'm, I'm trying to stay positive. These videos help me stay positive. When I see my five kids go out the door to school or in the afternoon they come home and they go play uh, or train tennis, and, and Carla goes out and teaches all the lessons, I'm still right here, and that's when the psychology of it gets on to me. Um, so I, I'd say I can deal with the pain at this point, but the mental kind of anguish um, is, is what kind of takes the cake. Anyway, uh, take care, everyone, um, and I'll keep doing these videos because, again, if you're sitting here like me, you're always wondering, I wonder what happens tomorrow. I wonder what happens the next day. Okay, today's day seven. Uh, I wonder if day eight's much better because anyone that goes through this is going to go through the same thing uh, and it's not fun uh, at, at all. So anyway, stay positive. Much love to all of you. Uh, take care and, and I wish the best for you. If you're seeing this video, you obviously have been through this. Um, so happy mending. At least uh, try your best. I know it's difficult. All right, see you later. Take care.
So sorry for the quick add-on here here at the end. I just thought of one thing as I was about to put this video uh, out. Um, one thing is patience, and 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 I'm the worst one to talk to about patience because I I don't have a lot of patience. But I've learned one thing that with this injury, you have to be number one patient in your own right, and then if you can't, you have to figure out something to occupy your mind. I'm not a big reader of books, uh, but I've tried to find little things to keep me busy, but. Uh, the most important thing is when you have this type of injury, you have to have someone supporting you. Uh, for me, it's my wife, uh, Carla. So if you watch our 5K tennis shows or podcasts or whatever, she's the one that, next to me in all those videos. Um, and how, why, why I bring her up in this one uh, is, is um, your support is everything. So if you're going through this and you're like me, a super active person, and, and you, you autom you're all of a sudden uh, inactive and there's nothing you can do about it, and, I, and you're a semi-perfectionist. In other words, I like things a thir certain way. I like a certain shirt. I like to do, do a certain routine and do kind of that routine the same way every day, and I like it to be that way, and that's just how I am. I grew up that way. Uh, but when you're relying on someone else and maybe they're not doing it the way you would do it, um, uh, we tend to kind of get impatient with your supporter. So I keep telling myself, Justin, be patient. This, this, this person is trying to help me in this sense. It's my wife. So why I'm saying this is if you have someone that's supporting you and they're bathing you and they're brushing your teeth and da, 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 everything that you can think of uh, that requires a leg or a hand, which is everything, and they don't do it the same way you do it, try to just breathe um and 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 just realize that that's your support so if you when, when you go through this injury if you have a supporter be patient with them because again they may not tie your shoe the same way you tie your shoe they may not brush uh your hair for you the same way that you brush it uh they may not like the same shirt that 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 uh that they would pick out that that you would want to put on and ultimately and again i'm not saying that, that I, I i don't do this but there's been times where i'm sitting here and you're already frustrated that you can't get up you're already frustrated that you can't do your job that you love you're already frustrated that uh, or impatient that you can't move and you're getting stir crazy um and and then all of a sudden you know it gets compiled by the, the discomfort of getting up and doing everything, and then someone tries to help you, and, and maybe you're already razzled and dazzled and frustrated, and you're wanting to get up, and life is about to just go boom, you know? Um, but realize that be patient with that person, because that person is, you're, you're everything in this sense. Um, so uh, love your support, um, and just be very, very grateful that they're there for you. All right, so thank you very much again, uh, and sorry to ramble on, uh, and take care. All right, bye.